I don't think any other race there was as much silence and anticipation. This is the hottest 200 meter field ever assembled at the Olympic Games. Peter Norman did get a good start, I thought. Smith is doing well. Look at Carlos going the center of the field, and Prestad is not beaten by any means. First thing that I was aware of was John's explosive start. He turned into the straight and he was gone. He was a gold medalist. John looked to his left looking for Tommy Smith, but Tommy was gone past him by that time. And then John said to himself, oh shoot, the white boy. Peter Norman is flying on the outside. Here comes Eichen here of West Germany. He's a threat. So too is uh, the uh, Trinidadian. Peter Norman running beautifully. And in the centre of the field is Tommy Smith running through. Peter Norman runs up late. For the second or third, it was a great performance by the Australian. In every other year but this, Australia's Peter Norman would have won the gold medal. It was one of the most exciting races that one could imagine. So how can we be an ally to ourselves, be an ally to others? An ally is a person that wants to fight for the equality of a marginalized group that they're not a part of. When you say you have a commitment, you have a total commitment. I'll die for Peter Norman any day, morning, noon, and night, just based on the character and the moral character of this individual. Be like Peter Norman. That was what civil rights icon John Carlos told me when I had the privilege of helping facilitate a meeting between him and modern day icon Colin Kaepernick. In today's hyper-political climate, hate crimes have increased every week. There's a new racist video circulating and the president himself uses America's worst massacre as a punchline in an awful joke. So I'm often asked by many predominantly white people who follow me, what can I do? Well, as it happens, this was a question I asked John Carlos that night and he gave a response, which I think should be held by the world. Be like Peter Norman. And I turned to Peter and I asked him, I said, Peter, I said, do you believe in human rights? And he said, of course. And I said to him, I said, would you like to wear an Olympic Project for Human Rights button? And he said, yeah. He wanted to be included in this. When you think of a protest against injustice, many of you will remember John Carlos and Tommy Smith, who at the 1968 Olympics famously raised their gloved fists to protest racial injustice. As a result, they were vilified, called traitors, and even expelled from the Olympic Games. But what is often overlooked in this heroic moment in US history was the role of Peter Norman, the Australian athlete who stood side by side with his black competitors. Now this part of the story, while undertold, is still somewhat recognized. Peter said he would stand by them wearing a human rights badge. One must realize what that button cost him. As a result, Peter Norman was also punished for his role in this protest. He was ridiculed upon his return to his homeland, suffering unofficial sanctions by his own Olympic committee. After 1968, he never ran in the Olympics again. But there is more, the part that gave me chills. A part of this story that John emphasized to me as I sat listening open mouth, a part that I have carried with me and that has helped sculpt my idea of what it means to be an ally. When long enough time had passed and Americans began to recognize Carlos and Smith for the heroes they were, they decided to create a monument. On October 17, 2005, the 37th anniversary of the event, a statue was unveiled at their alma mater, California's San Jose State University. Now, as you can see, only Carlos and Smith appear on the statue and the reason is astounding. Carlos told me the day he received the call informing him of the monument he as he always did insisted Peter Norman be honored and remembered as well Carlos then called his dear friend and informed him of the plans to honor their sacrifice to which Norman responded leave the spot where I stood open so that others can stand with you Norman requested that his space was left empty so that visitors who visited the exhibit could stand in his place and feel what he felt. This absolutely took my breath away and was so symbolic of what it means to be an ally in the fight against injustice. That this man, often overlooked in the history of this event, who had been mistreated by his own countrymen after representing them honorably in the Olympic Games, wanted nothing more than for future generations to stand beside these icons on this mantle. Now, I'm not going to put words in Dr. Carlos's mouth on how he wanted you or anyone else to interpret that, but for me, it reminds reminded me that I must listen, stand beside those who face oppression and lend my voice to the fight, encouraging others like me to stand with them. I will never forget that night, nor will I forget my role because of this. So maybe after hearing this story, you might identify yours as well.